Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today we're in Beijing to show you this Xiaomi SU7 Ultra. This is a 1500 horsepower tri-motor performance monster. What did I tell you? I've told you about this car in December last year. We can already confirm there will be an even stronger version with an even stronger rear motor. I have reliable rumor that that version, let's call it the SU7, Ultra. At the moment of shooting this video, I've actually shot a static review of the Xiaomi SU7 Ultra prototype. That's the non-road legal version. That's the full time attack version that's actually going to set a record at the Nautilus Life because the weather at the Nautilus Life has been very unpredictable. Surprise, surprise, you could be seeing this video first before that SU7 Ultra prototype. But this road legal version uses the same motor and battery combination as the non-road legal time attack version. It has two of these motors on the rear axle. Each motor has 578 horsepower. One of this motor are at the front axle. This is 392, so combined is 1540 horsepower, something around that. And this custom made 93 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now this is the same motor battery combination as that SU7 Ultra prototype, the one that has really aggressive aerodynamics. This car is also on carbon ceramic brakes with six piston Arcambono brake calipers at the front. Now, because this disc is so huge, you cannot fit racing slicks with this car. That's a slight shame because there's no racing slicks that's 21 inch in diameter. So the best tire you can fit onto this is maybe a Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R or the Trofeo R. You can also choose to have the Belstan Evo T1 coil over suspension. This car we are shooting right now is on the double chamber air suspension. I suspect for most people you should still go for the air suspension because you cannot even use even half of this car's power on the road and the air suspension does give you that airy ride quality. Now, being a performance car, of course, it needs a much stronger cooling package. The road going version, that is, this car has also been testing at the Norch Life and it can push for two laps in a row without overheating. The reason it's only two laps is because this car will run out of battery because it's only a 93 kilowatt hour battery. No electric vehicles at the Norch Life can push for more than three laps. As you can see with this rear wing, this car has a much enhanced aero package as well with this wing and the movable diffuser. This is currently, I believe, is the low drag position. It has a high downforce position. This car at 200 kph has about 90 kilos of downforce. That's comparable or competitive with the Porsche 911 Turbo S at 200 kph. And you have obviously spotted this rear wing is in full carbon fiber. This is everything made in carbon fiber on this car. The roof, the side skirt, uh, some interior trims, the steering wheel, rear wing, and the seat back. You can choose to have glass roof, and I believe I will if I'm buying this car, but it's nice to see they've made the effort to give you a carbon fiber option. Here on the inside, it's a considerable amount of carbon fiber. The steering wheel, this door trim, this center console, and Arcantara's all round and also on the seats. And I can also feel it's hard to convey this in the video, but the seat has much stronger side support. But apart from the materials and the color scheme, this is still the same cabin as the normal version of the Xiaomi SU7, which means it's a highly practical 1,500 horsepower performance car. And that's a common theme with Chinese electric performance cars. This and the Zika 001 FR has to be the two most practical 1000 horsepower plus performance vehicles in the world. And you can see I can still comfortably sit behind myself. I have to point out this carbon fiber back panel and this metallic finish add so much more of that performance car theater, but still not taking anything away from the practicality this is a wonderfully practical 1500 horsepower performance car. 
on things they can do better, I think they missed a trick here. They should keep the front cooling package and sacrifice the front to give it that performance car look. Because let's be honest, this car has 1500 horsepower. You're not going to use even one third of that on the road. This car's main job is on the road, scrolling in traffic at 10 miles an hour. It still needs to let everyone know this is the SU7 Ultra. And let's be honest, some aftermarket brands will very quickly follow with this front bumper and that rear wing. That's not difficult to copy, but this front bonnet cooling solution, that's no easy job. Secondly, I think they should keep that single arm wiper on the SU7 Ultra prototype. That is so racing car. If you watch GT racing series, you can already see all of the GT3 cars are on single arm wipers and all of the more production-based GT4 cars uses this more production-based double blade um, wipers. It will be so much more performance car oriented if it has that single arm wiper. Here comes the crucial point, price. We're filming this on October the 2nd, about a week before the actual launch. But let's work this, this way up from the SU7 Max. That is 300,000 RMB. But this car uses a bespoke motor, two of these on the rear axle, let's say 340,000. It also has this bespoke battery pack. Now have to develop a bespoke battery pack for a car that is easily another 70, 80,000 RMB on top. So let's call it 400,000 RMB. All of these carbon fiber bits, this is not a small amount of carbon fiber. Let's call this 430, 440,000. This carbon ceramic brakes is easily seven to 80,000 RMB. So just looking at all of these components, oh, and this double chamber air suspension is also a slight um, cost increase over the single chamber air suspension on the standard version of the road car. So only looking at these things, it's already added up to about 520,000 renminbi. Also, you have to consider this car is going to be sold in lower volume. This is not because of this higher price point. This is going to be sold in lower volume. So you need a higher price to compensate for the lack of volume. So my gut feeling is this car is going to be somewhere around 550,000 to 600,000 renminbi. So that's what, 70,000 euros to 77,000 euros. If this is a Porsche, it could easily double, even triple 200,000 um, euros. Can you buy something this potent? I don't think so, but yeah, I believe Xiaomi will give us a very surprising price for the amount of performance you're given. I can't actually tell whether at this point this car is worth purchasing or not because Something they've not told us is the weight, and I suspect this car won't be that light because the standard configuration SU7 is already 2.2 tons, and this car having one extra motor and all of these enhanced cooling, it adds weight. Yes, it has some carbon fiber and carbon ceramic brakes, that, but still, a motor is still easily 120, 150 kilos maximum. So this car we're probably looking at 2.3 to 2.4 ton on a track, even with this much grip and power, is still not going to be a fun experience. So if this car lives on the road, then my, that I care about the driving experience. Is it still a super enhanced electric golf cart? Or is it actually going to set my heart on fire, get my heart going? I hope it does. But at this moment, I don't actually know. They are talking about ways to do this car's dynamic media test drive and they say the only appropriate place is a track and not a small track because this car needs a long straight. I cannot agree more. I've, I'm very much looking forward to drive this car on track. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.